Okay, example 10 is again one of those examples where we're going to take a, a statement in human words and try and translate it into predicate logic. And that statement is all items not available at all stores, right? Um, a terrible statement, whether you're in, you know, trying to express something in English or in predicate logic, but that's what we're starting with. So let's start by making our definitions, okay? So let's say that I is our set of items and S is our set of stores. And then our function is going to be A of I, S, which says that item I from the set of items is in set S, the set of stores, right? That's our mapping, that's our function. Now, once we know that, then we need to decide what does the not apply to? Because again, when we're using uh, predicate and even propositional and Boolean logic, what the not applies to is clear because we use parentheses. In this case, it's not nearly as clear because we're not using parentheses. So let's, let's try it a couple different ways. Let's start by saying not available at all stores, all right? This is going to be our statement to begin with. So what this is saying is that all items, right, all items that are members of I, not all for all stores that are members of the store set, A of I sub S is not true for all of them. That's, so that comes down there, and then this whole statement comes down here. Does that make sense? I don't know why I'm asking you. You can't answer. That makes sense. If it doesn't, pause this video and take a moment to think about it. All right. Now, remember, according to our theorem two, when we negate a universal quantifier, what we get is uh, the existential quantifier and the function being not true. So once we negate this, we get there exists stores inside of set S such that the function A of I S is not true. And then the existential qualifier on our item set is unchanged. So in English, that is saying for every item on the flyer, there's at least one store where you can't get it. Probably not what they intended. So let's Let's try and play around with those parentheses and see if we can get a different interpretation. Okay, so assume instead that our parentheses are around not available. So all items not available at all stores. That would be again for all I's that are members of the set items. And then for all stores that are individual stores that are members of the entire set of stores, not a I S. So what does that mean? That means for all items at all stores, it's not available. <laughs> There's nothing anywhere. Obviously that's not right either, right? Um, so what did they really mean? Well, they probably meant that some items are not available at some stores, right? How can we write that in predicate logic? Well, so some items means that there exists items I in the set of all items. And some, some stores means there exists stores in the set of all stores such that our function A of I S, that is the function that says the item is available to store is not true, right? That's what we meant to say. Um, by the way, your book kind of does this backwards. Your book starts with a, the predicate statement and then reverse engineers it into English, which is an interesting example, but that's not how, it's, it's not really a good way to understand it. The best way to understand it is to write it in the proper English statement and then convert that into predicate logic. If you have any questions on this, ask in the forum below.